Emmanuel Okoye out of London, England, it signs with the Vols. So this is not just a commitment. I may have misspoken earlier, but this is a guy who's going to be on Tennessee's campus in 2023. He wants to be uh, a part of summer workout. So he theoretically could get there in the next, could get to Knoxville in the next couple of days. But uh, you, you would think that the second session of summer school would be a real possibility. And um, if not, he'll be with, with Tennessee in the fall. Now, this is a guy who has a 45 and a half inch vertical. This is a guy who is a project guy. Okay. So it, he's not going to show up on campus and have 10 sacks this year, Caleb. But uh, this is a guy who Southern California wanted really bad. And a lot of people were after him. And I think it's uh, pretty exciting for Tennessee to be able to pull a guy like this. The upside is tremendous. Um, in the old days, Caleb, I might argue that you take up a scholarship in hopes of an impact player, but nowadays it's a business. And at some point, if a Koye can't play, they're just going to say you're better off elsewhere. So there's really no risk involved here with a guy that has tremendous upside. What did you think of the get by the balls? Yeah, I thought it was a great pickup for Tennessee. I even break from you a little bit in terms of whether or not he makes an impact this year. If he doesn't, it's because of how loaded they are at edge rusher. But let's not forget, if you look at Okoye and you look at his highlights, the very what you very clearly get is he's raw, but he's got incredible instincts and he's very athletic. Here's the thing about edge rusher. Not a lot of learning at that position. Not a lot of roles you have to play. On top of that, in Tennessee's system, edge rushers don't have to develop too much. They can be pretty raw. Remember, Byron Young was extremely raw when he got signed two years ago, and he immediately broke out and was an impact player. I think Rodney Garner and Mike Eckler have a pretty solid system, whether or not you think Okoye okay, would play outside linebacker or defensive end. And what could happen is, I mean, again, athleticism and potential outweighs being seasoned at the position when it comes to edge rusher. It's almost like running back. You can plug a guy in in Tennessee's system and just have them ready to go. Agreed. Even if he never, ever is an impact player, he's already had an impact. It is one of the top stories, and it's it's a slow time as far as uh, sports news, but it's, it's one of the top stories on ESPN right now. Chris Lowe just wrote about it, and because you have a better story, um, because he's from Nigeria, uh, he was part of the NFL Academy program in England, so he's going to play college football at Tennessee. Six foot five, 230 pounds, USC and Texas Tech were the other schools. He also had offers from other Power Five schools, including uh, Georgia. So the plan is to enroll this summer, and as far as uh, a, an impact and what he can have, I've seen firsthand a guy come in, Constantine Ritzman, came in from Germany and was a fish out of water in the beginning. And not to say that'll be a Koye, but Ritzman turned into a captain for the Vols. So the, the transition can be made. And uh, again, a Koye's upside, no offense to Constantine Ritzman, but I think he was a very solid player. Okoye's upside is more significant. 45 and a half inch uh, vertical is what we've been told. I would like to see that in person. But that is through the NFL Academy. Uh, 11 foot, three inch broad jump, both of which would be NFL combine records for defensive ends and a 72 inch wingspan. So it's almost as if, uh, Caleb, who looks uh, very angelic on this day, it's almost as if Okoye was created in heaven to be a, a defensive end edge rusher in football. So pretty significant. Absolutely. A fun fact about Constantine Ritzman, he scored 10 points in the 2001 season in three different ways. He recovered a fumble for a touchdown against Kentucky. He got a safety against Syracuse. And this is the funniest one. He was in on an extra point against Memphis that was blocked. And then the holder, I think was the, at the time, I forget his name, improvised and picked up the block extra point and threw it into the end zone to Constantine Richmond for a two point conversion. So I covered those games and I don't remember that. That's Caleb Calhoun, ladies and gentlemen. That's, it's a, <laughs> that's one of the wildest plays. Imagine a blocked extra point turning into a two point conversion. 
Like that is a wild play. And, but yeah, no, that, that did happen with Constantine Ritzman. But yeah, I think this guy, okay. has much greater upside right now. Tyler Barron and Roman Harrison seem like the, they're the season vets, but with Okoye in Dave, I mean, next year, James Pierce, Joshua Josephs, Emmanuel Okoye. I mean, we're talking, we, you've already talked about Joshua Josephs. You think if you just like, you, you, you and Fred White both say, if you just like protect put a bubble suit around him and you say, he's going to be just a superstar the minute you unleash him. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt. Um, so imagine him on one side and then Okoye with this raw potential on the other. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, he grew up playing soccer, so you'd think he'd have great feet. Uh, he was a basketball guy. This is according to Chris Lowe. And then he was discovered last year by, if you remember, O.C. Yumanura, the defensive end for the uh, New York Giants with that great front they had. And it's part of the Uprise program uh, that scouts out these guys. So here's a guy that probably was not a great fit in football, but, uh, I'm sorry, basketball, because he's six foot five, and there are a lot of six foot five dudes. He's probably too big to play soccer. This is his this is his chance and he, to to make a living playing sports and he should grab a hold of it and uh, take advantage because there are not a lot of dudes walking around with that type of athletic ability. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's 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 the big thing is there he's got just rare athleticism and the fact that he played basketball. We've seen this defensive end is a position where or edge rush is a position where Typically, your skills in basketball translate because a lot of edge rushers are playing in the post in basketball, and a lot of it's about their big focus is rebounding and leverage. That's You know this from covering Tennessee basketball in 2001. Julius Peppers was a master at leverage, and Tennessee had no idea how to deal with him when he came into the game. And yeah. So it's like how playing center field translates to playing safety really well. There you go. I like that. Uh, good stuff. All right. So hit the like and subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, have your notifications on a couple things on the message board is whitewashed Caleb because he's having a lighting issue, which is worth the visit to YouTube. If you're on one of our audio platforms, the new Swayze from Ghost, the Omen, he's getting some of that, but it's his birthday, guys. So wish Caleb happy birthday because he certainly keeps me straight and no question about it uh so happy birthday and i'm just giving you a hard time caleb you know that i think you look very angelic happy birthday are you um do you share your your birthday your age or are you uh, of the uh, female persuasion that does not like to share that like my wife no i share it yeah i'm 35 years old I don't 35 care. years old he's so young by the way somebody mentioned that constantine <laughs> ritzman was the germinator and he absolutely hated that nickname. I remember asking him about that. And I said, uh, what do you think about your new nickname, the Germinator? And he goes, I don't really like that, but that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> what was his response? I just would have loved for him to have played for Derek Dooley and just gotten the D-Day analogy of the Germans during World War II. Nice. Nice.